In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the choppiness indicator or fractal energy indicator into the Thinkorswim platform so that you can use it on your charts for helping you decide when a market is likely to start trending again or when a market is exhausted and perhaps is going to start consolidating. So the way you go about this, the first thing you do is you come over to charts and we're going to click on studies over here on the right and we're going to click edit studies and when this window pops up we're going to come down here where it says create and that'll create a new study so in order to do this in order to install the choppiness indicator we need the code for it so first let's clear out the default code that they have in there and we're going to name our new study that we're going to create choppiness indicator. And now we need to put the code in. So that comes in a text file. And what I have to do is just drag across and highlight all the text and then right click and click copy. And then once I do that, I can move that out of the way. And now I come back into the window and right click and hit paste. And now all the code for the choppiness indicator is in the platform. So we just hit OK. And notice how it has already added the choppiness indicator to the lower end of the chart. But we just have to hit apply and then it'll appear. And once I hit OK, we're all set. Now that gets the choppiness indicator built into the platform to where we can now apply that indicator to any chart we want because it's now one of the indicators that the platform carries. So we need a way to put it onto a fractal time series of monthly, weekly, daily, and 78 minute charts, for example. So I come up here to this box where it will allow me to create whatever type of chart pattern I want or configuration of charts and I'm just going to left click on the first box upper left and drag across because I want four vertical charts that just go top to bottom it's going to give me the four charts so now what I want to do is I want to link the charts to whatever symbol is going to be in my first chart so notice how there's already a red link mark on this first chart if there wasn't, it might have started out by being unlinked, and then you can just link the charts together with the same color symbol. Now, you don't have to choose red. It could be yellow or blue or green, but you just have to make sure that all four of these charts have the same color link. So I'm going to use red. And notice how I just hit the link to red, and it automatically populates the chart with the symbol that was in the first one, because now they're all together. And if I was to change my symbol to the Qs, it would update all the charts. If I go back to SPY, it would give me all the charts back again. By default, whenever you create a chart, Thinkorswim is putting a volume graph at the bottom. And I would rather not have the volume graph. I want to install the choppiness indicator. And I don't want it to compete for real estate space on the screen. So I want to get rid of the volume graph on all three charts. Now you have to do it individually here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first come up here and click and maximize this cell. And there's a few changes we're going to make to each of the charts and I'll go through the steps on one of them in detail and then I'll just repeat them quickly on the other charts. The first step would be to come up here to chart settings and there's a few settings that I want to change. I want to come over to the time axis and I'm going to check keep time zoom on the time axis and what that's going to do is it's going to allow whatever amount of data I have on the screen if I change to another symbol it's not going to default back to 20 years worth of data or three years worth of data it'll keep if I was if I had three months of data showing on the screen it'll keep the three months of data on the screen for the next symbol if you have a an amount of data that you like on your chart you won't have to keep sizing the amount of data every time you go in there. You can keep time zoom. And you can always you can always edit it or change it or uncheck it if you wanted to have more data. 
So the other thing I want to do is I want to come over here to equities. And here it shows volume subgraph is checked. So that means it's going to show this on the screen. So I'm going to uncheck that and click apply and it will take that off the screen. And that'll give me the room I need to put the fractal energy indicator or choppiness index indicator on the, on the screen. The one other thing I want to get rid of is show extended hours trading session. So I'm going to uncheck show extended hours because I just want the indicator to work for the regular trading session. So I'm going to uncheck that and hit apply. And one last thing back on the time axis, I'm going to create a few extra bars of space to the right of my chart. I'm going to use the number three. And it's just going to give me a little room to the right so that notice over here on the right where the last bar or the current bar is right up against the sidewall here. By clicking a, a certain value here, you're going to give it a certain amount of room and I'm going to give it three bars worth of room. And the reason I'm using a low number is because we're going to have four charts side by side on the screen. And if I was using one chart on the screen, I might use 10 as my number. But since I have four charts on the screen, I'm going to use the number three. And let me hit apply and notice how it just shifts it over a little. So once I click OK, I'm now going to come back here to this box here and restore the cell size. Okay, now we still need to put the fractal energy or choppiness indicator on the chart. So that you do by coming up here to studies. And we're going to edit studies and we're going to come down and find the choppiness indicator that we installed and click add selected. And then we're just going to hit apply and OK. And let me just demonstrate what I meant by keep time zoom. Let's say that I wanted to use the magnification down here where I wanted to see only back to June on this chart each time I bring it up. And on this chart, perhaps I want to see this amount of data. A little more detail than that one. And that's kind of the default I want to see when I change the symbol. Now, if I have keep time zoom checked, it will bring the next symbol up with this same amount of data. If I don't have keep time zoom checked, what's going to happen is it's going to take whatever amount of data was here and default back to showing me all the data for that chart. So watch what happens when I change the symbol. If I change it over to IWM, Notice how this chart kept the same amount of data, but this chart went all the way back to what was there before. So that's because the setting for keep time zoom was checked on this one, and I have not done it yet on this one. So in order to do that for the other one, what we're going to do is just maximize the cell, click on the gear icon, come over to time axis, and click this. And we'll also change this to a 3 for the space to the right. Hit apply, hit OK, and now we'll restore that cell. Now we still have, if I zoom in on this now, and then I change the symbol back to SPY, notice how it keeps the same amount of zoom. Now one other thing, we didn't change the charts that right now they're linked together but they're all daily charts so if I come up here to this daily I'm going to switch it to monthly I'm going to come over here and I'm going to switch this one to weekly this one I can leave it daily it's already there and this one I'm going to switch to 78 minute chart and if you don't have the monthly chart or the 78 minute chart set up by default on your platform there is another video that shows you how to edit the quick time frames so that it will be in the drop down menu for you and you can just click on it so that it'll apply to any chart. Now take note that over here on the 78 minute chart it's showing me different shading of the darker and the lighter color there and let me zoom in on this and maximize this cell and what it's doing is the regular session is in one color and the after hours is in another color. And that's because I haven't set up this chart. I haven't removed the volume yet, and I haven't gotten rid of the after hours session information. And I also haven't put the indicator on that we want. 
So I'm going to come over here and do this all right now. And if I come over here and hit time axis, we'll do keep time zoom. We'll put a three over here. We'll hit apply. We'll come over to equities and we'll put show extended hours. We'll uncheck that and we'll hit apply. And then over here, we're going to uncheck the volume subgraph and hit apply. And then we're back to where we now have the chart and we need to put the indicator on. Click on studies, edit studies, scroll down, choppiness indicator, add selected, hit apply, hit OK. And now we can restore this cell back to its original size and we have to do it for one more. I'm going to come up here, maximize cell. gear icon, time axis, keep time zoom, three bars of space on my chart, hit apply, equities, uncheck show extended hours, uncheck volume subgraph, hit apply. Now we come over to studies, edit studies, scroll down to choppiness indicator, add selected, hit apply, hit OK. And now we come back here and hit restore cells. So now let's say that this is the amount of data I'd want to look at for these two charts. And now that they're all set to keep time zoom, whatever, whatever amount of data I have on the chart will remain there by default as I go to a different symbol. And if I come back to SPY, Notice how it just remains with that same amount of data. And now I have the fractal energy or choppiness indicator on all four charts. Now there's one other thing that you should really do. If you come over here where we built our chart before, where we created the four charts next to each other, if I click on that, I can come down here to save grid as, and that's gonna open up a box and you can name this layout that you have. And let's say we want to call it four chart choppiness indicator. And you hit save. And now if, if you have multiple different configurations that you want, where here I have one chart, no studies. And then if I come back over here, and find the one that I just saved up here for chart choppiness indicator. Now that study is available, but I don't have to have it on there all the time. And the other most important thing is to come up here to set up and save your workspace. Now, if you haven't named your workspaces or have multiple workspaces, you could do that and name this as whatever you want to call it. Or you could just hit save and it'll save it to the default one. But if you don't hit save, you may have to reconfigure anything that you did hit or change without, without saving. So it's very important that you come up and hit save before you exit the program. So I hope this video helped you. Have a great day.